They play and swim with them and even allow their children to ride on their backs. Eu não tive nenhum... Olá, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina Lin, and I am a wildlife biologist that works in the Pacific Northwest on the conservation of endangered species. So today we are going to look at problematic wildlife videos. There's something about humans that we just love watching videos of cute animals connecting with humans, being cuddled by humans and like looking like they really enjoy it. However, many times the most ethical and the best way to help animals and make them feel happy and secure and loved is to stay away from wild animals, supporting their natural behaviors, which generally do not involve human contact. I think it's really important to understand this so then we can think critically when we see a video of whether or not it is ethical or not. Okay. As I was searching online, I searched cute wildlife and this is the, this is the first channel that came up and then I, I quickly scanned on it and I got such weird vibes, but it seems like they're posting almost every single day. Some of these titles are just, I'm not sure what they're going for, for the thumbnail and the titles here. We have beautiful girl take bath for Asia until has stool. playing to my today now he's buddy and he's uh, close so dirty <laughs> okay so there are a few things wrong with monkeys as pets while monkeys can imitate a lot of human behaviors which humans think makes a really good pet because that's really what it is is like we value communication in a pet and feeling like we're loved by a pet and monkeys are so similar to humans and their behaviors that we're able to get that from a monkey pet that knows how to please us it knows how to do the funny gestures the funny faces that are going to make us laugh and reward that pet so it kind of feeds into our own psychological need for affection from an animal monkeys are smuggled out of their native habitats in order to be sold as pets across the world monkeys besides being sourced illegally monkeys are no joke i know someone who worked with monkeys at an animal sanctuary and she was completely disfigured by a monkey that had just ripped her apart because she did something that the monkey didn't like and when an animal hurts a human I can tell you right now who's going to be the one that's going to win. That monkey's going to be put down if it hurt anyone. Hello everybody. Today we are going to tell you about amazing friendships between animals and humans. Forget horror stories about cruelty of wild predators or narrow-mindedness of birds, which are apparently not able to feel affection and devotion. We are going to dispel your doubts because on our list, we have an amazing bond of a man with an African lion. A, a huge oh, right. Okay, I gotta stop right here already. There is more options besides carnivores are cruel and horrible and let's hug them and keep them in our backyards as pets. An American woman, Janice Haley, has managed to make a conquest of huge and furry Bengal tigers and became a real mother for them. About if your whole life revolves around being a mother of tigers and holding captive tigers in your backyard, I think you need to examine the role and relationship you have with animals because animals are not there to serve us and to make us happy and content and to cuddle with them and to spoon them in your backyard. Tigers are meant to be in the wild. They're meant to be in their wild habitat, not taken out of their wild habitat to be a pet and in the pet trade. The first tiger cub was born in her garden in Orlando, Florida. She nursed him with a special mixture and gave herself the name of Mother of Tigers. For now, Janice, together with her husband and daughter, is looking after a huge white male named Saber. Despite the frightening size of the predators, not only does the woman enter the cage, but she lies with them for hours, enjoying and stroking their sharp- Once she's breeding big cats, it sounds like. I mean, I don't know her personally, but her saying she nursed a tiger. Two, look at this enclosure for the tiger. It's a cage with a little bit of sand in it. This is nowhere near the natural environment of the tiger. Then there's people like this who are supporting the pet trade by buying animals to fulfill their own mental needs. I know I'm sounding harsh here, 
but I've worked at animal sanctuaries that take these animals after there has been an accident or they realize they can't take care of them anymore. And these animals can never be released into the wild. The way that they're hugging them and cuddling them means they're never again going to be able to live their natural lives out in the wild. They're too accustomed to humans. So they are doomed to be in a cage for the rest of their life because people like this need a tiger as a pet. They're one of the most dangerous animals in the world. Yet one family show no fear when it comes to their pet tigers. They play and swim with them and even allow their children to ride on their back. Eu não tive nem um pouco de medo da da oh minha filha. God, you should be. I don't know why people do this. What kind of pleasure do you get from illegally buying a smuggled animal, keeping it captive in your house? and then taking your children and making it look like they're writing it and then taking photos of it and posting it online. Like, why do people do this? Here's something will go wrong sooner or later. This guy's speaking, speaking some sense. Ari Boyce and his family have not one but seven tigers. No! Together with his three daughters, Desanira, Yara, and Nayara, Ari and the family eat, live, and even swim with the God, giant God, this one's cats. the worst one so far. Despite having no experience with tigers, Ari rescued two of the big cats from a circus eight years ago. Rescued? After found them living in bad conditions. Whoa. Okay, I'm just gonna comment on that. Even if an animal is not sourced from the illegal animal trade, if you cannot give it a proper habitat, it's not a rescue. Eu não tive nem um pouco de medo da, da minha filha, respeito a That's not how it works. So, like, people who are saying you need to show the animals respect and love and then you get it back to them, okay, fair, of course we need to respect animals. Wild animals have instincts. And when they're taken out of their natural environment, their instincts are unpredictable. Their behaviors are extremely unpredictable. We are projecting these human emotions on them by saying, oh, you just have to respect them and they'll love you right back. That's maybe the case for some humans, but that's not how it works with wild animals. If we're like being nice to it and friendly, that doesn't mean that we're able to suddenly befriend and override the instincts of generations and generations of evolution. And it wasn't long before Ari's daughter, Yurara, began feeding, petting, and walking the tigers on leads. That's, oh, okay. That's not how it works. You can't take a wild animal and keep it in a house for a few years and say that its instincts have become dormant. 20 year old Nayara has formed a special bond with one of the tigers, Tom, and regularly swims with him. Com Tom três vezes na semana para manter esse condicionamento dele de nadar, até mesmo porque ele está um pouco pesado, se dificilmente ele entra na piscina sem. Yara's husband Rafael is terrified of big cats. This guy is the voice of reason. <laughs> and Yara's decision to allow her young daughter to interact with the tigers is not going down well. That's just an accident we didn't have to Como eu, ou não precisaria se envolver tanto. Ari and his family will continue their intimate but controversial relationship with their feline pets. Acreditamos no, no trabalho que nós estamos fazendo, você entendeu? E em prol dos animais, que é uma causa nobre, vai se concretizar. Não sei que Deus não queira, mas. Oh, opa! <laughs> really? Really? You're gonna end on that? The cat like was showing him he didn't want to be touched and he just smacked him right back and then kept touching him. I just want to say I'm not against people having animal sanctuaries. I've worked at animal sanctuaries. I've even had hands on contact with animals at animal sanctuaries, but it needs to be handled with the utmost degree of caution. So that means trained people working with these animals, um, people who have knowledge of animal behavior and minimizing the contact as much as possible and allowing the animal to instigate as much contact as possible. <laughs> Definitely listens to you, doesn't she? Maria didn't always live here in the zoo. Up until two years ago, her home was a park in central LA where Dominic used to go for his regular morning walk. Coming in, delete. One of the park employees by the officer taps me on the shoulder and he says, hey, Dominic, uh, you know you're being stalked when you're walking around the lake. <laughs> and I said, uh, like, you know, what are you talking about? Because this is a big city park. There's gangs and stuff hanging around there. 
So he points to this goose about 50 feet away, and he just says, her name's Maria. He laughed. He thought it was funny. But I looked at Maria, and Maria was just, was just glaring at me, just glaring at me. And I just yeah, he thought it was waved. Funny, but I, I said, hi, Maria. How you doing, Maria? And I thought it was kind of cute. I left, came back the next morning, and Maria came right to me, right in front of me, and just looked up so innocently. And I just fell in love, just like that. The pair quickly became inseparable. When you fall in love with a goose, you've got to be aware of what you're getting involved with. But their loyalty is phenomenal. Remember, they bond for life. So cute. For the local residents, they became something of a celebrity couple. One time we had 100 <laughs> people marching behind us as we're walking around the lake and we're singing Maria songs, and I mean, it became such a festive thing. This is the type of relationship with an animal that's appropriate, that's respectful, and really respects everyone's boundaries. Some of the things that stood out to me as a wildlife biologist about this video is he is not initiating contact. He's not running over to the animal and rubbing it and like petting it. Two, the animal came up to him and initiated that contact and built that relationship with him. Him. The animal is not much of a danger to him. You know, they're common in parks. They're used to being around humans. So there's no issues here. This is the type of video that we need more of and less of the monkey and the tiger videos. If you guys have any other problematic animal videos you want me to review or you just want to see another version of this video, leave a comment in the comment box below. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and ambitious. So thank you guys for watching this video and thank you for caring about animals enough to take what I'm saying with heart. It really means a lot. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.